Question 50. A car travels in a constant speed around a section of horizontal circular track. Horizontal means it's a flat track. It doesn't have banked curves to it, which changes everything, trust me. So it's a horizontal circular track. On the diagram in your answer booklet, draw an arrow at point P to represent the direction of the centripetal acceleration. Well, the word centripetal means center seeking, towards the center. So this should be easy. The car's at point P, going around a curve, then this would be the center, so the centripetal acceleration would be towards the center of the curve. Centripetal force, also in the same direction. Now if the car were over here, it would also be towards the center. And if they gave you the car right here, direction would be, yeah, Centripetal means center seeking. That's worth a point. That little arrow. Oh, don't forget an arrow at the end of it. Question 51. Calculate the magnitude of the impulse applied to a 0.75 kilogram cart to change its velocity from 0.5 meters per second east to 2 meters per second east. Show all work, including the equation substituting the units. Do no points for this. All right, let's list what we know before we get carried away. I've got a mass equal to 0.75 kilograms. Its velocity initial is 0 0.50 meters per second east. Velocity final is uh, 2.00 meters per second, also east. And they're looking for impulse. Now, at this point, you might ask yourself, what is impulse? I forgot all about impulse. I can't do this. I give up. I'm going to leave it blank. But let's plug through it and see what happens. This is obviously things that are being moved. So let's find the formula sheet and go to mechanics. So here we are in mechanics. And we can look at the right-hand side. And we just look at it and go, acceleration, so triple acceleration, force, centripetal force, acceleration. Well, look at that. There's the word impulse, and the word impulse has got a J next to it. So we're looking for J, whatever that stuff is. All right, so now we go over to the formulas, and we find, oh, there it is. There's a J. J is equal to force net times time. All right, that's good. J, so we write the formula J equals force net times time. Okay, good. I don't have any force net here. I don't have any time. I hate that. Oh, wait a minute. On the formula sheet, it also said that it was equal to change in P, whatever P is, delta P. I go look over here, and uh, it tells me that, uh, oh, P here is momentum. Momentum. And momentum, here it is, P is momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity, therefore change in momentum would be equal to mass times change in velocity. So I can write J is equal to P, delta P, which is equal to M delta V, and which is kind of nice because I got me some M. I got me a couple of V's. I can find a delta V. Impulse is equal to mass times velocity final minus velocity initial. That's change in velocity. Change in anything, whatever I've got minus whatever I started with. So we can write momentum is uh, 0.75 kilograms times uh, 2.00 meters per second minus 0 0.500 well, zero meters per second. And be honest, if you just threw one and a half in there, I would be happy. One and a half meters per second, I would have been happy. All right, so momentum is equal to 0.75 kilograms times one and a half meters per second. And I'm looking at what, about 1.125 kilogram meters per second? Yeah, well, as it turns out, that is in fact the unit of momentum, kilogram meters per second. You don't reduce it any smaller. Uh, if you got all the way up to force, mass times acceleration, we can reduce that to newtons, but kilogram meters per second is as low as we go. Question 52. 
The diagram below represents two electrons, E1, E2, making them negatively charged. And they're located between two oppositely charged parallel plates. Compare the magnitude of the force exerted by the electric field on E1 to the magnitude of the force exerted by the electric field on E2. Well, here's the physics of it. Now, uh, it will experience, the electron will experience a strong repulsive force as a result of the negative field here, and a relatively weak attractive force as a result of the positive field there for a total force acting on that electron. As the electron moves, or in this case a second electron is placed, it will feel a proportionately lower force of repulsion, but a proportionally higher force of attraction. And the upshot is, is that the force experienced here will be the same as the force experienced here. The concept is the force between two parallel plates is the same on an electron within those plates. So this is pretty easy. So uh, somehow write that here. 